please, today's video is part six of the documentary Examining the 1950s Housewife. In this video, we will be looking at a few articles regarding how women feel about working or not working while raising children. How do stay-at-home mums feel? Stay-at-home mums are the happiest. Women who don't return to work suffer less from feelings of boredom and worthlessness. Stay-at-home mothers are more likely to think their lives are worthwhile than women who go to work, a study of national happiness suggests. They tend not to suffer from boredom, frustration or feelings of worthlessness according to the research on Britain's well-being. Full-time mothers gave the value of their lives a score of 8 out of 10 compared to 7.8 for people in work. Data also revealed that married people are significantly more contented than cohabitees and much happier than single or divorced people. Home versus work. Researchers found that stay-at-home mums tend to be more socially isolated, are typically more depressed than working mums, stress more since they are around the children each day. Also, working mothers were more likely to report their health as excellent compared to their non-working counterparts. Very Well Family had an article on evidence-based pros and cons of being a stay-at-home mum. The pros include increase in child's school performance, child has less stress and aggression, social approval, cons, desire to return to work, higher levels of sadness, social isolation for mother. Psychology Today. Are stay-at-home mums happier? The feminists assert that being home alone with the kids leads to social iso isolation, an important factor in depression. Their opponents counter that employment is stressful. How is it not depressing to be at work worrying all the time about the kids? Whoever is right, let's not forget the implications for the children. Growing up with a depressed mother means you are at risk for a variety of problems from becoming depressed yourself to ADHD, substance abuse and psychopathology to name a few. So who is doing it right? The June Cleavers or the Miranda Priestleys of the world? As in so many things psychological, it depends, says working mothers, stay-at-home mothers and depression risk by Margaret Ustdansky and Rachel Gordon in a report for the Council on Contemporary Families. They write that the risk of depression depends upon mothers' preferences and on their job quality. If you want to stay home and you can afford it, your risk of depression is indeed low. But if you would rather be at work, the risk significantly increases. And if you want to stay home but you are forced to work at a low quality job, your depression risk is the same as those at home who would rather be working. For mums who are working, depression risk depends on the quality of the job and this can even trump women's preference. If you prefer to work but are stuck in a dead-end job, you're at higher risk. But if at work you're mistress of the universe, you're less likely to be depressed, even if you would rather be with the kids. How do working women feel? Harvard Business Review. Executive women and the myth of having it all. There is a secret out there, a painful, well-kept secret. At midlife, between a third and a half of all successful career women in the United States do not have children. In fact, 33% of such women, business executives, doctors, lawyers, academics and the like, in the 41 to 55 age bracket are childless, and that figure rises to 42% in corporate America. These women have not chosen to remain childless. The vast majority, in fact, yearn for children. Indeed, some have gone to extraordinary lengths to bring a baby into their lives. They subject themselves to complex medical pro procedures, shell out tens of thousands of dollars and derail their careers, mostly to no avail. 
because these efforts come too late. In the words of one senior manager, the typical high achieving woman, childless at midlife, has not made a choice, but a creeping non-choice. Part-time mother. Research has found that part-time mothers reported less conflict between home and work, were more involved in their child's schooling, provided more learning opportunities for their children compared to both stay-at-home mums and full-time working mothers. Part-time mothers truly have the best of both worlds. They have the opportunity to get out of the home for necessary mum breaks, to socialise and be an adult, but also have the extra time to spend with their kids. A year ago, I bought a book, um, about a year or two years ago, I bought a book called Happy Women Live Better by Valerie Burton. And I just want to read a few paragraphs from this book. In 2012, Forbes.com reported that 84% of working women told Forbes Woman and The Bump that staying home to raise children is a financial luxury they aspire to. Many women, especially mums, are open to the idea of stepping right off the professional merry-go-round. This is especially evident among Generation X women. While many of their mothers took a few weeks maternity leave and headed right back to work, many Gen Xers are more likely to stop working for at least a few years after having children. Perhaps it is because they watched their mums having it all and decided to opt for something different. Based on Forbes survey, even the ones who do not step out of the workforce long to do so. While we are told, while we were told we could have it all and it is assumed we want to climb the highest heights of professional success. Three quarters of working women today say they aspire to a financial lifestyle that would allow them to stop working and stay home. Women who pursue it all, education, career, marriage, children, have increasingly discovered that the more they achieve in the first half of that equation, education, career, the smaller their chances of success in the second half, marriage, children. Statistics are clear that the more educated you are and the more money you make, the less likely you are to ever get married and have children. The opposite is true for men. Are stay-at-home mums better for our kids than working mums? According to a recent Harvard research study that provides data from two cross-national social surveys of more than 100,000 men and women from 29 countries, working mums can breathe a sigh of relief. Evidence suggests that children of working mums grow up to be just as happy as children of stay-at-home mums. In fact, having a working mum comes with potential benefits for adult children. For example, research findings suggest that when compared to stay-at-home mums, children of working mums were found to have more education, Daughters of working mums are more likely to be employed, advance their careers and have higher annual earnings. Sons of working mums were found to spend more time caring for their families. The researchers suggest that having an employed mother provides a model for the skills needed to manage both employment and domestic responsibilities and promotes attitudes of gender equality. It's also notable that their is research to suggest that when mothers work, there is little change in the time, particularly quality time, parents spend with their children, even if you don't have time to make homemade pastries for the bake sale. What does this mean? This is by no means, this by no means implies that stay-at-home mothers are doing a disservice to their children or themselves. It means that mothers can feel empowered to make a decision about whether or not to work without taking societal norms and expectations into account. It means that women can make a decision based on their particular situation and what works best for them. When we stop striving to have it all, we can focus on what is in line with our needs and our values and prioritize our time and resources 
accordingly without worrying if choosing a career is damaging our children. A few takeaways. Both working mums and stay-at-home mums are at risk of being depressed. Women need an outlet outside of their motherly duties, whether work or a hobby. Both women can face resentment for their position at some point, even if they choose it. Most women want to spend time with their children. Whether a mother is working or not, her happiness and mental health and involvement with the child is what has the most impact on a child's development. Thank you for watching and while you are visiting, please remember to like and subscribe.